Hello, welcome to your first video for the Legislative Branch Unit. Uh, the Legislative Branch Unit includes chapters five, six, and seven in your textbooks, and I will send you those readings through Google Classroom. Uh, this is the first part of this unit. It is a two-part unit, so you will have two tests on the Legislative Branch. All right. So our objective for today is to figure out exactly how the United States Legislative Branch functions. Now, this is a pretty big objective, so we're going to be working on this for a couple days in class. Congress. Before we get into the meat of this video, I want you to remember what Congress is and what they do. Okay, Congress is our legislative branch. Okay, the legislative branch makes laws. The legislative branch makes laws. Don't forget that. Congress is comprised of the House of Representatives and the Senate. Okay, so because Congress includes the House of Representatives and the Senate, we call them a bicameral legislature. Okay, that prefix bi means two, and cameral refers to chamber or house. Okay, so a bicameral legislature is a group of people who make laws and it's made of two houses, okay? Next, a congressional session. There we go. A congressional session is what we refer to the one year period during which Congress legislates or when they're in session, okay? These one year periods will begin in January of every year, okay? So every time um, we celebrate the new year, a few days later, the congressional session begins. Now, along with the congressional session is a congressional term, okay? Uh, a term is a two-year period that begins on January 3rd of odd-numbered years. Okay, so let's backtrack for a second. In November of every even-numbered year, we hold a congressional election. In November uh, of even-numbered years every four years, we hold a presidential election as well. Okay, so every two years, no matter what, we're going to have a congressional election. So the people that were voted into office in November of 2014 won't start their term until January of 2015, okay? Now, because January 3rd, as you can see here, that's the constitutional date that Congress is supposed to convene every year, uh, because that fell on a Saturday, Congress, towards the end of last year, voted together um, in a joint resolution, and we'll talk about that later on, uh, but basically said, okay, guys, we're not going to meet until January 6th because we don't want to come to work on a Saturday. That's basically what it was. So Tuesday, January 6th is when the new Congress will convene. And you say, why are they starting on Tuesday? Why don't they just start on Monday? Well, the uh, congressman wanted to allow Monday as a travel day. Okay. So starting on Tuesday, we will um, we'll start to see the new members of Congress stroll in. Okay. So some more background. Um, we have senators and representatives that make up the United States Congress. Now, senators obviously work in the Senate. Representatives are also called congressmen, work in the House of Representatives, okay? Now, uh, each state gets at least one representative and they always get two senators. And I'll explain that real quick. If you can think all the way back to when we talked about the Constitution, we talked about the Virginia plan and the New Jersey plan and the Great Compromise, we said that uh, those plans all together gave us a bicameral legislature, like we're talking about here, and it was made of the House of Representatives and the Senate. Now, to kind of appease both sides of this issue, the Senate was granted, or the people were granted equal representation in the Senate, and then representation based on population in the House, okay? And we'll talk more about that in class after you watch this video. So, senators, no matter what, every state gets two senators. It doesn't matter if you're sparsely populated like Alaska, or if you've got a whole bunch of people living in your state like California does. Every state gets two, okay? and every state gets at least one representative. And again, that number is based on the state's population, okay? So Missouri has eight representatives and we have two senators, okay? So scrolling on down, salary, you guys are gonna love this part, okay? Um, and this is something that is always interesting to know. I can't say that this will be on your test, but it's just it's all one of those fun things to know um, to kind of broaden your understanding of, of Congress. An average senator or representative makes $174,000 a year, okay? So the people that just got elected in November, their first paycheck will be for 174 divided by 12 or however they take their payment. 
Okay, that's a pretty good starting salary. So a regular congressman make $174,000 a year. If you are the Speaker of the House, you make $223,500 a year. I would take that paycheck. And if you are a leader in a le leadership position in either the House or the Senate, like if you're in the uh, if you're the president pro tempore of the Senate, which we'll talk about in a couple of days, um, or if you're the House Majority Leader or the House Minority Leader or anything like that, then you get one hundred and ninety three thousand dollars a year. Not too shabby, okay? Now, um, sometimes it's once once we get into the legislative process, sometimes it's kind of difficult to think, wow, we pay these people a lot of money just to sit around and argue, which is it's kind of what's happening. Um, but their job is really important. So anyway. All right, moving on ahead then, we're gonna start talking about um, the people who are, are, who are involved in uh, the legislative process. Some congressmen can vote and some can't vote. Now you ask, why would you even bother being in Congress if you can't vote on laws? That seems kind of dumb, right? Well, only people or only um, congressmen that represent a state are given the opportunity to vote. OK, so we have 50 states. Yes, that means we have 535 voting members of Congress. Now, let's do some math here. And you know how much I love math. Every state, it's two senators. So 50 times two is 100. Now, every state gets at least one representative, and that number is based on the population of their state. So we have 435 members of the House of Representatives, and then we have 100 senators. Put that number together, you get 535. OK, now we also have people that can't vote. OK, we have people from Washington, D.C. and from the United States territories that basically can show up, but they don't have any voting power. OK, so you say, why can't someone vote from Washington, D.C.? Why don't they have voting representation in Congress? Well, ask yourself this question. Is Washington, D.C. a state? No, it's not. So because of that, they don't have voting representation in Congress. So the rest of these listed here are American territories, Guam, American Samoa, the U.S. Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and the Northern Mariana Islands are all examples of United States territories. Now, each of these, Guam, American Samoa, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the Northern Mariana Islands have a delegate that represents them in Congress. Um, they can discuss legislation, but they have no... Um, authority to vote on said legislation. Puerto Rico has what's called a resident commissioner, uh, and that person has the, same, has the same job. They can't vote, but they can still talk about stuff, okay? So, and we'll Google Earth that in class. We'll figure out where all of those different places are. So, starting then with the House of Representatives. Um, I'm gonna go through the qualifications and terms for the House of Representatives and for the Senate, but if you, um, want to see them written down, then you can access that in your textbook, okay? So again, just a reminder, please pause me and rewind me as you need to. So qualifications and terms of the House of Representatives. First of all, uh, to be a representative, you have to be at least 25 years old. You have to be a citizen of the United States for at least seven years. And you have to be a resident of the district you're going to represent, okay? And we'll talk about districts and all that kind of stuff. Uh, later on. So again, you have to be 25 years old, be a citizen of the United States for seven years, and you have to have residency in the state or the district you're going to represent, okay? You don't have to be a natural born citizen like you would if you were going to be president. Oh, and terms, before I forget. Uh, congressmen or representatives serve two-year terms. So every two years when we have that um, election in November of every uh, even-numbered year, all of the members of the House of Representatives are up for re-election, all 435 of them. That's a lot of people who could potentially lose their jobs. Keep that in mind. All right, and some vocabulary terms that I want you to know about um, concerning the House of Representatives. Now, the census is something that I'm sure you've talked about before. The last census we had was in 2010, but this is a population count, okay? And it occurs every 10 years. Now, this is extremely important to the House of Representatives because... That's what determines how many representatives each state gets. And we'll look at all this stuff in class and in activity. Next, we have reapportionment, okay? Now, if you are going to apportion something, you're gonna like spread it out or distribute it, okay? So to reapportion means to redistribute something, okay? In this case, that something 
is uh, representatives in the House. So every 10 years after we have a census, we redistribute representatives based on the results of that census. OK, so I'll give you an example here in Missouri in 2010, um, when as the results of our census were rolling in, we actually lost one member of Congress. OK, so prior to the 2012 election, which was the first time we had an election after the census, I know I'm throwing a lot of numbers at you, but um, with the 2012 election, uh, we actually had eight representatives instead of nine. And we'll look at how that all happened on a couple of different maps. So reapportionment is the redistribution of representatives after the census. Now, if you have reapportioned or redistributed your representatives and you're a state like Missouri and you lose a representative, then you have to redistrict. You have to redraw your district lines because you can't have nine districts and only have eight representatives. That doesn't make any sense. So the redistricting process is the process of redrawing district lines after reapportionment has, uh, has taken place, okay? And you redraw those district lines theoretically based on the population of the areas uh, or the counties uh, or the geographical regions that you're making your districts from. Oops, hello. And then last but not least is gerrymandering, okay? Now gerrymandering isn't up here, but I'm gonna go ahead and give you a, a definition of it real quickly. Gerrymandering, G-E-R-R-Y-M-A-N-D-E-R-I-N-G. You need to pause me and remind, rewind me to get that down, then please do. But gerrymandering is the process of redrawing district lines to benefit a political party, okay? And we're gonna work on gerrymandering in class, but I do wanna show you these uh, maps real quickly. So this is the census map after 2010, excuse me. Okay, so this map is kind of small here, but I'm gonna show you a bigger one in class. Basically, every state that is orange lost at least one representative after the 2010 census. Every state that's in that navy color gained at least one representative after the 2010 census. And then every state that's kind of that ugly gray color um, had no change. So they kept the same representatives that they had. Uh, California over here has 53 representatives. And for the first time in a few decades, California did not gain a representative. So that was kind of a big deal in, uh, after the 2010 census. All right, and what you see here is the Missouri Congressional District map as of the 2010 election, okay? So as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine congressional districts, okay? And that was going into the 2010 uh, election, okay? So this isn't how our map looks anymore. Nowadays, our map looks something like this, okay? Remember I told you when we talked about reapportionment that we actually lost a representative in after the 2010 census. So if you see here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight districts, okay? So what happened to that ninth district, you ask? Well, that is what we're gonna focus on in class tomorrow, or today, sorry. So please go ahead. Uh, make sure that you've been keeping up with uh, your Google Doc notes. Make sure that you've been answering the questions as we go on Edpuzzle. And if you have any questions, let me know. See ya.